Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we will be doing episode 21 of the Motor GP21 career mode. We will have race 3 and 4, so we'll have Texas up first and then we'll be off to Portimao. I suspect we will struggle a bit more than we did in Argentina. Let's find out. So unfortunately, we are going through Q1 today. Uh, been a struggling weekend at Texas track I'm usually very good at this Moto 2 bike this Calyx feels so nervous I have no front end feeling and yeah it's a uh, I reckon I, I can make it out of Q2 we're just red in sector 1 but uh, the AI seem very strong this track I don't know if we'll be able to even score points here Unfortunately, I do feel that our pace is quite poor and that we will struggle even though we are third in the championship and we won the last race. I believe we will be fighting an uphill battle in this round. Hopefully, Portimao will be better. But just from free practice, I've been way off it. And it's a lot to do with the bike. I'm not comfortable on it. In these heavy braking zones here, the bike's moving around a lot. I have no front end feeling. There's so many bumps to this track, so when you have no confidence, it saps any confidence you had left. So, yeah, look, we'll see. I hope. But I, I believe a tough race is in store. We want to massively wide there, just proving my point right on cue. Still point three under, so. Looking likely, even though for some reason Sam Lowe's is in Q1, we didn't have any mixed weather, so it's very unusual to see a top team rider like Sam Lowe's down in Q1. Currently leads with a 212.1. So we come in to the final corner. Should probably put us top out of the table for now. A 2 minute 11, we're up by a massive amount. Top Q1 into Q2. So we come out of the last bend to start our one and only lap in Q2. So our current time of 2.11.2 from Remy Gardner is the top time. I was quite a bit off that in Q1, so we'll see what we can do. We'll do our best. It will be key that we get a good start, starting position, and a good start around here to compensate for my lack of pace but yeah our one and finally chance of a good qualifying position so we're going to just give it everything 0 0.352 over in sector one not ideal but we'll keep pushing sector one isn't my strongest sectors on this track i don't really have a strong sector now that i think of it but i don't think sector one is my strongest so we come up to the halfway point. Bike slightly out of shape. And we tuck the front. End of Q2. I was saying the bike was out of shape. Coming into it, we bend it. So, yeah. P18 on the grid. After I was saying we need a good qualifying position to get away with the leaders, I go and bin it. And we are P18. So I'm going to struggle here, I reckon. It's going to be a difficult race. It's going to be... Hopefully I get a good start. And if I get a good start, you never know. I might get lucky. I might get a bit of fortune. Favours the brave, as they say. So I'm going to be brave and aggressive into turn one. Looks like we made up a good few positions. Up to P13, up to P12. So we're up six positions off the line. I go ahead, Stefano Manzi, your teammate just behind. We're going for the inside on Agora. He blocks us. We go to the outside. Can we go to the outside through the snake? Get that wrong. And if bike clicked over so heavy, we've gotten the snake all wrong. We've had contact with Navarro as we go through the snake. Through turn six now. We're back down to P14. That's Canic going up to the inside. Oh, and he's crashed on the outside. Canic has been it on the outside. So he went for an aggressive move. Don't reckon there was contact. So I absolutely blow turn eight and Dixon and Marcel Schotter fly up the inside. And Nico Bulaga has managed to get past as well in the scurry. 
So we come down to where I crashed in qualifying and I'm in hot once again. Can't even keep it on track. P18 for me. So an initial launch was good. But since then we've just been shedding positions. Clearly don't have the pace for a good result today. So we just need to dig deep and see what we can do. It's gaining hot all over the curbs. We're not going to get this one stopped. Just about squared it off to keep the bike on track. Now Sam Lowe's is on our outside. Probably will switch to my inside through this corner. Oh, just so he goes 18th better off it. He sends up my inside. And he's forced me into a track limits warning. Through the sector here, the bike feels incredibly bad. From them bouncing around like mad. These are one of my favourite sections here. It's quite actually tricky on a motor two bike because I give myself my second track limits warning. Nothing Sam had to do with that. That was all my doing. Yari Montella and Samkia Trancher just ahead of me in the battle for P20. So, oh, there's a crash on the outside. Oh, that's Xavier here coming through. I think T, um, Tom Lutie had been there because the 2M were dropping out of time on board. So I reckon Tom Lutie went for a more overtake and binned it and took Xavi Xavier a little bit wide with him. They both rejoined at the same time. So currently sitting P20, we dropped a handful of positions. Can we go up the inside of Chantra? We have actually managed to get it done into the snake. Ooh, massive front end slide. Nearly tucking the front on entry to the snake. That could have been bad. That could have been end of race. Just see if you just look at my handlebars, how much they're moving when I'm on full lean. I can feel all that through the controller. I have zero confidence in this bike. Oh, I get a little love tap from Chantra. Left that quite late. Forced me wide, so I'm gonna try and repay the favour. Lucy and Marcus Ramirez right on my tail. Up to power mode three. Trying to get a good drive on the back straight and taking a pass and down into this tight left hander. Going to the outside. Massive overspeed. Hard on the brakes. And still Chandra fights back, almost sitting me up in the middle of turn 12. So we come in now to this dreaded stadium section, 14, 15, 16. Oh, so we have a huge moment, a massive tank slapper on the curbs and we couldn't get the bike stopped. Down to P26. Not been a great race for me so far. Lap four, and we're still only after gaining on position back after running off track. We got a four track limit warning. Our current personal best is a 13 0. And second place man, Remy Gardner, is on a 10.7. So we're really, really off the pace in this race, unfortunately. Incredibly difficult track. And I'm not doing myself any favours with my own riding. My teammate Hector Gauza up ahead. I'm in hot pursuit. But I'm getting nowhere. On one track I was running off a long lap. So I need to be wary of that. Simone Corsay tucked in behind me. Come out this difficult braking zone, downhill, very fast on an entry, and I get it all wrong into turn 12. So, Simone, of course, is gaining on me, but look, oh, was a run it wide, run it wide, that wasn't good. Sounds like Simone is right there. Oh, just a contact, and we are down. Oh my god, we've binned it. We have ruined a really bad race weekend. Oh, it's over. We've completely screwed it up. Heartbreak in Texas. A terrible weekend comes to end. Fabio wins it from Remy Gardner and Bezecchi takes home third. And we drop to P4 in the championship. 
time for a thermos. So, we did actually get through to Q2 directly for thermos. It was dry sessions all weekend, so this is my first time in the wet at this track. So, see what we can do. Feeling has been overall better here than it was in Texas. Haven't struggled as much, which is good. But I'm still not as comfortable. Not as bumpy this track. Just go half a second over in sector one. As I was saying, not as bumpy in this track, but has lots of ups and downs, so a lot of places where you can still lose the front very easily. After using power one a lot in this wet, just to get myself some traction. Feels like in the wet when you're riding with the AI, they have traction themselves and that the player doesn't. Obviously I'm running real electronics so I don't get traction. Because the real life motor 2 bikes don't have traction control on board. We're in the gap down to point 2 so we've gained a nice bit of time in sector 2. So we've come up to the difficult turn 10, Portimao corner, through turn 11, always a bit of a struggle. Now we drop down through turn 12, very fast on a motor 2 bike. And now turn 13, unlucky for some, very easy corner to crash. Hot spot at this track for crashing. Coming to the penultimate corner. Ooh, rear let's go small it. And again on the curb, so we are looking like we're going to set a good lap time. But where will it put us on the grid is the question. Drew Galp, the final corner. Set it up, power three, pin it to line. A lot of wheel spin still. Been a decent lap, probably the best I could have hoped for, really. It's not going to be Paul. Oh, we've gone top. But we end P5, so half a second off. Not a bad result. Decent for me to end up that far off. As there's been a massive crash on the grid, riders down all over the place. Oi, look at that. Oh, <laughs> landed on his wheels. <laughs> I don't know what is going on there. But anyway. Let's get into the race. P5, my best qualifying of the year. And we're off. Looks to be a good start. We've actually getting off the line quite good in this Moto2 career. Can we lead into turn one? We're trying it. Maybe can we dive him into turn four? Or turn three, sorry, up in here. Can we leave the brakes off? We're going for the bike snaps. I just pick him up running slightly wide. Oh, and even that, Re Remy Gardner, or Raul Fernandez even. Ooh, so we're getting bumped out onto the car. That's the track in the morning. So we're slightly under fuel, but we need that extra pace in the bike. I've gone for a soft rear, so I'm going to have to really be gentle on the bike. And hope that I'll be able to um, manage it. I felt like I'll need the extra grip throughout the race and maybe struggle at the end for pace. But yeah, hoping I'll be able to get a good race out of it. The temperature's been slightly less as well, maybe I won't put too much stress through it. But he's opening laps here in this dull, dull Portimao circuit. Dull conditions, shall I say. Just the bike is so unsteady on the braking. I really feel like a million million miles away from what he's riding model 3 as sam Lowe's comes up the inside sits me up in the middle of t14 that is a not even sam Lowe's actually sorry it was i presumed it was sam Lowe's. augusta fernandez number 37 his teammate as we get a track limits warning for that that was nothing we didn't even that's it's a bit unfortunate really so once again one lap done two penalties can we get Fernandez back into turn one? Looks like we're laying on the brakes. Can we get it stopped? No is the answer. We're on a massive wide. Fernandez is back through. Into turn three. Can we get up on the inside? No. Once again. Oh, front end has a massive moment. Massive moment from the front end. So now I just need to hopefully stick on to the back of Fernandez. Go with him. 
Hopefully he can pull me away from Remy Gardner, Dixon and Aya Gore who's behind me. I seem to be trying to make up all my time on the brakes. That's not seem to work as Jake Dixon behind me has crashed. I think he's taking Aya Gore down as well because I think I saw two riders down. There's another crash further back somewhere. But currently P5. This would be our by far our best dry result if we could stay in P5. But uh, Augusto Fernandez has dropped the hammer. He is disappearing into the sunset. If I try and go with him, I know I will crash. So I need to just stick with the stick with the strategy, save the rear tire, and hopefully I can bag a handful of points today. In this Portuguese Grand Prix, if you remember last year, I DNF'd here. I was chasing the pack after a poor start. I was chasing it. Oh, he touched the inside curb and Remy Gardner sits me off for a good measure and that leaves Sam Lowe's too as well. So, we go from P5 down to P7 and Joe Roberts and Jorge Navarro right on my tail. But as I was saying in Model 3 last year, we were chasing down, got a poor start and we were chasing down the pack following Pedro Costa and he was making great pace. We were flying through and we touched the white lane in Craig Jones' corner, lost the front and that was end of race. Right again on the back of Sam Lowe's. We seem to have decent pace through this first initial part of the track. But as we oh, as we have massive contact there with Joe Roberts, and he's actually it looks like he's crashed behind me, so he's had a bit of a moment himself after the collision. That's dropped just a couple of tenths to Sam Lowe's. Once again, in hot, cannot get it stopped. The issues with this one or two bike. Are really being sought out in this episode. Huge lack of confidence and feel and performance in braking is where I'm losing nearly all my time. Toppled with a lack of consistency in all conditions and just true laps. Can't string a good, consistent set of laps together. And uh, yeah, losing too much time, unfortunately. So, P7, as we sit, we've dropped two positions from our good spot. Sam Lowe's is hot on the tail of Remy Gardner. Now it's Tony Arbolino. Dying about Ryder who's behind. Jorge Navarro is behind him, so I reckon they'll be queuing up to try and get me next. Just got a third track this morning. So once again we're 1.8 off. We were 2.3 seconds off in Texas. We're 1.8 off the fast slap at the moment. And we are going to go about half a second quicker than that. Judging by our delta. So we're probably really only or 46-0 compared to 40, so we're 1.4 off at best. Still way too big of a gap to be doing in race trim. Fabio just able to ride at a much higher level consistently compared to me. Again, just true there, the front is just keeps I'm having loads of chatter. Struggling quite a bit. I get stopped into this heavy braking zone. I've been struggling all race. That's a bit better. It's closer to the AP. Oh, it was, we actually, it was much better. But Chestino Vietti managed to sneak his Sky VR6 Calyx up my inside. So now, once again, he's gone through, so I'm going to try and stick with him if I can. See, so can he pull me through? But Tony Arbolino is sitting right on me now, so he's probably going to. Seen off yet? He has done and probably tried the same. So we drop down through turn 12. Just through here, look how unsteady the bike is snapping side to side. Really upsetting. The chassis of the bike under heavy braking zone it looks like Arbolino might go for it again oh, it's actually Navarro this time Navarro's past Arbolino so it looks like all, me and Arbolino have very similar pace as riders are passing both of us and gapping each other again just trying to hang on to him now see can he pull his through we had a great drive out of the final corner fly past him across the finish straight down into turn one Again, a good bit on the brakes into turn one on Vietti. 
Oh, again, the is still sitting just behind me. I'm afraid to look behind in case there's a big... Ooh, front end once again. Not liking turn three. Small bit of spin as we get up the hill now. I am starting to feel that soft rear go off. So I am struggling slightly for edge grip mainly. And I have a bit too much spin. Fortunately for me, I don't have any traction on this bike. And I, uh, I do miss it a bit. It's a very good uh, assist to have, or not even assist, electronic to be able to play with. Especially in the wet track. I know my one and only victory came in this class in a wet race, but I was so slow on it. Up next, my favourite track in the world. How that? So, I really hope. Will we be able to get a result there? I don't know. Currently in PA at the moment, which is quite strong result for me. The flag without now, I'd be very happy with a P8. We've started the season. Okay. We'll just run it massively wide there. Not going to get that stop. Surely that's going to be Arbelino through. He's alongside us. We sit up. We've collided side by side. And we've gone on the grass on the inside. And that's four track limits running again. So, and we've dropped behind Canet now as well. So we actually are in hot water. Ooh, could have got a track limits warning there as well. Getting slipstream in Canet slipstream. Can we go to the inside? Grounding a bit of Arbelino's across the line. Down in turn one. Are they going to fight it back? Yes, they are. Arbelino once again flies past me. And there's contact between me and Kenneth as we come through turn four. As we go for dive into. Oh, that's going to run wide. We force Kenneth wide through turn five. So we are scrapping for every position here at the moment. Somewhere I can't see where Canada is. I reckon he's going to send it up into this corner here. Thinks better of it. Drop down through Craig Jones corner. Flick the boy. Oh, it's the rear end. So soft rear is really letting go. Not giving me any feedback. Just, you can see there on entry, it was just backing itself in. My rear tires had enough. As again, we run off. Is that the penalty? No, it's not. Thankfully, we got away at one there. Now, our teammate Hector Gazzo is through, and that's another speed up. That's, or it's a Bosco score these days, sorry. That is Navarro. Finally, he's made the move on me. So P12, our rear tyre has really dropped us backwards in this race. Even when power turned up, we actually had a good stoppy into turn one. Can we get this one stopped? That could have been the penalty. Oh, we actually just we run across the nose of Jorge Navarro. Can we get drive on them? Can we fight back for P10? I feel like my rear tire is shot. I do feel. Oh, is we hot? Are we going to tag the back of them? No, we're not. I do feel like we're just going to constantly go backwards. But hopefully, again, I can say that video if we can just tag onto the right in front and try and go with them, they can pull us out of the grass of Hashish, Hafish Serene and Albert Arenas behind me. Once again, the rear end protesting on the rotation of the bike. Coming up to start the penultimate lap. We've been consistent, as you can see by our times on the right there. We've been in 46s all race. So, we are consistent, but we are slow. Is unfortunate. 
And unfortunately now it looks like Cyrene is close enough. He is gaining on me. He started the last lap in another 46. Gain a good amount back on the brakes in turn one on Navarro. Can we try and move into turn three up in here? No, he's too far forward. He goes slightly defensive anyway. The bike backs itself in. Nice head check from my Calyx as it comes out of turn four. Heavy on the brakes and we've tagged the back of Navarro. He's run wide. And he's actually crashed, so we've caused the crash. So we're back into P11 and we have small contact. That alone should be worth the long that penalty. Oh, as we, jeez, uh, we lose the front out the outside curb. We're having a dreadful last lap here in Portimao. These have been, in this episode has been terrible. We've been two races where we've been off the pace. Thankfully in this race it looks like we're going to come home in P11 with some points for 13 and a half seconds off the winner of Fabio Di Antonio on the exact same bike alright we're going to have to get some developments done with this bike I'm just too far back at the moment yeah Cyrene is there I reckon he's going to try a dive bomb into this corner as it is the last lap of the race won't be surprised to see him and there he goes he tries it, I'm going to cut to the inside, get a bit of slipstream, power up the hill. And it looks like we've done it, we've passed him back for P11. Not the best race, Drop back towards the end, but it was to be expected. So once again, Fabio Di Antonio has won from Zecchi and Fernandez. Drop to P6, 25 points off now. It's getting a bit harder. Right, well, I'm going to leave that there for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed up next we have Haret and a hope for some better racing there. I really is struggling these boat races today. This was a difficult episode for me. After victory in Thermos, poor episode here. So hopefully we'll have a better one for Haret and Le Mans. I shall see you then. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.